Let's tie a Darling Darting Damsel. At least that's the working name for right now. We begin with a Daiichi, 1167. This happens to be in the size 12. The thread I'm using is Uni 17 aught Trico, and the bead is a 1.5 millimeter tungsten gold bead. I've laid down a bit of a base of thread. I'm going to take some bead chain eyes in medium and lash it to the hook. I've got about, oh, half a space. I want to leave about a half, a, half an eye space between the bead chain eyes and the eye of the hook. That's where I'm going to tie off my wing case. I'm also going to add a drop of super glue and that's to lock it down. Now, the reason I tie those eyes in there, my hope and the intent and what happens is that the fly, when it lands on the rocks, it lands with the hook point up. Keep it out of the weeds and out of the, out of the other debris. Now, I'm just lashing it with figure eight wraps. And I'm going to take my thread and wrap it to the back end of the hook right when the hook starts going what would be downward or vertical. I'm going to take three pieces of olive ostrich hurl and they'll make the tails quite long. The reason being is when that fly lands hook point up, those tails will stick straight up and then they will move in the water and make it give it more make it more lifelike or at least the impression of life now I reposition the hook so I have better access to the back end as you can see the tail section is quite long and that's to get that movement. Now I'll tie them in here, and then I've also got a piece of small D-rib in olive, and I've taken, taken a pair of heated hemostaps and crimped the end of it to flatten it out, and then also I'm gonna taper it, and that's so I don't get so much buildup when I start wrapping. Now I'm gonna tie off this spool of thread and leave it to the back. The reason is I'm gonna use this thread to catch uh, my ostrich roll as I bring it up to the front to make it look like it's got gills. But I'll take another spool of thread and bring it up at the front in order to lash down my D-rib. Now I'm repositioning my hook once again so that I have better access to the abdomen. This also is 17 knot uni. You'll note these nippers, I get these from Walmart, and they're for like $3.99. And they trim off real to the quick. You got to be careful because sometimes you can cut your thread off. Now I'm going to take my bobbin and hang it off on my bobbin holder. And then I'm going to take my D-rib and wrap it with concentric circles, concentric wraps up to the front of the hook right behind the bead. Now I'll put a little pressure on here and then ease up on the pressure as I bring it up to the front. That's to give it just a touch of a, of a taper. I'm going to tie off my D-rib and then trim both the thread and the D-rib.
And I'm going to take my bobbin, my back end bobbin now, and I'm going to pull my osteoturl on the sides of the abdomen and then wrap the thread through it. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about trapping the hairs. I just like, I just want to have a little bit of fuzz to make it look like gills. And there's not really gills on a, on a damsel, but I like to have it there because it gives it movement in the water and it makes it look more lifelike. At least that's what I think. Now, I don't try to hit every single notch every two or three segments and then I'll drop the thread over that. I do try to keep the ostrich hurl to the sides as much as possible though. Now I'm going to trim my that extra strand of osteotrol as well as my excess. Now I've got a piece of medallion sheeting in olive olive brown in olive and it's about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. Right there I'm just picking out some of the hairs. But I'm going to take that medallion sheeting and it's going to be my wing case. So I'm moving my thread back a bit and I'm going to tie in that medallion sheeting. Now you can always make your own. Just take some Swiss straw, some thinned out shoe goo, and a marker. Marker it the color you want, spread some shoe goo on it, and laminate it. And that's your medallion sheeting. Now I've got another piece of peacock curl and olive for my thorax area. And I brought it up right behind the eye the, excuse me, right behind the bead. And I'll trim it off now. Trim and tie it off. Now I'm going to take my thread to about mid thorax and I'm going to split it. Now I've got some, the hair's hair, the guard hairs off a hair's mask. You see what I'm doing with the thread? It's kind of unspun. I flatten it out by lifting it with my other finger and then just poke my bodkin through it and that splits the thread nicely. Now I've got a pedigene tool trapped. That's a bit of uh, wax right there, dubbing wax. I've got a pedigene tool with some guard hairs. You know, everybody's got those extra, those hairs masks that are left over. They've, you've already harvested the forehead as well as the cheeks. Well, this is the leftover stuff. I take a pinch of it with my pedaging tool and brush out the under fur, and then I'm left with the guard hairs. And I like them because they're tapered and they go from olive, in this case, olive to black. Now I'm just spinning it to lock those, those hairs in there. It's amazing how strong it is, even with 17-knot thread. 
I know splitting 17 odd threads kind of daunting, but if you'll just let it untwist, hold it up with the other finger so it flattens out like a ribbon, and then poke it, that'll do the trick. Now, as you can see, I'm preening back the guard hairs as I make my wraps. I'm repositioning it so I get better access to the flat part of the hook up at the front. And I'm going to pull my medallion sheeting through the middle of there, because that's my wing case, and then tie it off right behind the eye. Now I'm going to take a marker and marker my thread and then finish with a whip finish. Well, basically the fly's done. I've just got to put a little bit of UV resin on top of the wing case. Now you'll see I'm preening it down because I want to get those hairs out of the way of the medallion sheeting. If you put that UV resin and there's hairs in there, it just looks unkept. It doesn't lay down smooth. So I'm preening it back and I'm also going to draw my UV resin from the knot across the wing case and back into the abdomen. I found that medallion sheeting doesn't stick very well, well, the UV resin doesn't stick very well to medallion sheeting, but if you anchor it at the front and the back end, it holds, it holds stays in place much longer. And you'll notice the reason I like UV resin is because when you lay a drop of it down, it's self-leveling. Where some of the other UV resins don't do that very well. Now I'm going to hit it with my laser to cure the UV resin. And it takes about, oh, five to ten seconds. Now I'm going to take my scissors and cut out that middle section. I'm just being fussy right now. And I'm just preening the hairs off so it looks good. And that's my darling darting damsel.